subscribe and click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi guys and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use the indirect function in Excel. So the indirect function, if you've never used it before, is part of the lookup and reference group of functions in Excel. So if we jump across to the formulas ribbon, you will find it in the lookup and reference group. And there it is sitting just there, indirect. Now the indirect function is unique in many ways because it is an Excel function, but it doesn't perform any calculations, it doesn't evaluate conditions, or perform any kind of logical test. So you might be thinking, well, what exactly does indirect do, and why is it going to be useful to me? Well, what indirect actually does is it's used to indirectly reference cells, ranges, other sheets or workbooks. It lets you return the reference to a cell based on its string representation. So as a result, you can change a cell reference within a formula without changing the formula itself. Now, whilst you may have understood what I've said there, it's probably really not going to be clear until we dive into some examples. So let's do that now so that you can fully understand what indirect actually does. So we're going to start out with a very basic example of indirect. So what I have here is a very simple spreadsheet. In cell D2, I have the text G2. And then in cell G2, I have the numerical value 600. So what I could do is I could type into cell A2 equals indirect. And I could select D2 close that off and if I hit enter it's going to give me the value of 600. Now why is it doing that? It's indirectly referencing 600 because there is a cell reference in the actual cell that I've referenced in the indirect formula. So indirect D2, it's going to D2, it's seeing that there's a cell reference in there, G2, it then goes to there and it pulls back the value of 600. So we're indirectly getting the value that we need into cell A2. So that is the concept of indirect in its most basic form. Let's now look at a more complicated example. And what I'm going to do here is utilize indirect with another function, and in this case, the sum function. So you can see how indirect works with many other functions that are available in Excel. So what I have here is some data that shows sales figures by region for 10 different sales agents. And my aim here is to be able to type the region into cell G4 and have it return the total number of sales for that region in cell H4. And I can do this by combining the sum function with the indirect function. Now to make this process a little quicker and easier, I've named each of the ranges for north, south, east and west. So again, if you're not sure how to name ranges, there is a link to the tutorial on how to do that within the accompanying blog post. But essentially I have this cell range named North, this one named South, this one named East, and this one named West. And I can check that I have those set up by clicking the drop down in the name box. And you can see here I have East, North, South, and West, along with some other ones which we're going to use later in examples. So I'm going to build up my sum with my indirect calculation. So let's click in total sales. I'm going to say equals. I'm going to type in sum. I'm going to say indirect. I'm going to open a bracket. And now it's asking me for my reference text. So essentially what I want it to do is refer to whatever region I've typed into cell G4. So I could type in north, east, south, west but every single time it's going to be in cell G4. I'm going to close my bracket and I need to add another bracket on the end because you must always close off the amount of brackets that you've opened within your formula. Now when I hit enter here, I'm going to get a reference error and that's because currently I don't have anything in cell G4. But what if I add in the word south, hit enter, 
it works. So essentially what this formula is doing is it's saying, look at cell G4, find what's in cell G4 and match it to the named range, which in this case is the south range, all of these figures. And then it's doing the sum to give me my result. It should work if I change this to west, hit enter, and now I'm getting the sum of all of these calculations. And if you do want to double check, if you don't actually believe that's correct, you could do a quick sum calculation. Let's just add those up. And there we go, 5332, 5332. So that's a really quick example of using sum with indirect. Let's move on to our second example. Now in this example, we're going to use indirect with what we call R1, C1 referencing. And this is gonna help us to get the last value in a table, even if that table grows or expands. So currently, the last value that I'm interested in, I'm interested in the totals, and I'm currently interested in the last value, so the totals for August. But what might happen here is that next month I'm going to add the sales figures for September into column J. So the last totals figure next month is going to be in cell J15. So I want to make sure that the formula that I construct using indirect is going to update and be correct each time I add new data in. It's always looking for that last figure. Now, if you don't know what I mean by R1C1 referencing, all that is, is it's an alternative way of referencing cells in a spreadsheet. So by default, you are more than likely used to using what we call the A1 style of referencing when working in Excel. So cells are referenced using their column letter and their row number. So for example, this is E1, uh, this is C18, so on and so forth. That is A1 referencing style. R1C1 referencing stands for row and column. So instead of referencing columns by their letter, you would use the column number. So for example, column A essentially equals one. Column B, two. Column C, three. So with all that in mind, let's start to construct our formula. So I'm looking for the current sales, essentially the total that displays for the last month. So I'm going to click in cell K4. I'm going to type in equals. And I'm going to type in indirect and open my bracket. Now what I need to do here is use that R1C1 referencing style. And I need to put this in quote marks. So I'm going to say R, which is for row. What row am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for row 15. I want the total. So we're going to have row 15. But what I want it to do now is I want it to give me essentially what we have down here in I15, but bearing in mind that each month it's going to change. So in order to accommodate this, I need to make the column essentially a count. So I'm adding in C for column. I'm going to close off my quote marks. I'm going to do an ampersand, which is essentially concatenate, and I'm going to do a count A. So what I want it to do is essentially count how many items we have in row 15. I'm going to close off my bracket. I'm going to do a comma, and my last argument here is whether I'm using R1C1 style or A1 style. So I've used R1C1 referencing, so my final argument is going to be false, and close off my bracket. So let's just work through that again. I'm saying equals indirect. I'm then providing it with essentially the cell reference in R1C1 style. So we're saying row 15, which is the totals row. I then have C for column, but I can't just put in the column because that's always going to change. And in order to work that out, I'm using the count A function to count across in column 15. Let's hit enter. And it's correctly given me the current sales total, which is $71,050. Just to make sure this works, I'm going to add September into here. And I'm just going to add a figure into here. Let's just say 20,000. If I enter, I can see that now that is updated because 20,000 is now the last set of values or the last set of results I'm looking for. 
Now the final example I'm going to show you for indirect is using indirect with data validation lists. And again, this is something that's really, really useful. What we're going to do is we're going to use the indirect function to create two dynamic data validation drop down lists. And I'm aiming to create a drop down list in cell B14 that lists the countries and then a drop down list in cell B15 that lists the tours available in whichever country has been selected in cell B14. So essentially the tour is really dependent on what I have selected in country. Now again, to make this a little bit quicker, I've already created named ranges for countries, Bali, India, Thailand, and Australia. And again, if we click the drop down, you can see that I have all of those listed there. So if I was to select Bali, you can see that this is the range for Bali. So now that I've done that, I'm going to jump down to the country cell, cell B14, and I'm going to add a data validation list that just lists these countries. So up to the data ribbon, across to the data tools group, I'm going to click the drop down and select data validation. We are looking to create a drop down list. And my source, I could select my cell range, but because I've named them, I can just type in equals countries in there and click on OK. Now what you'll see I get is a little arrow and if I click it, it's now going to show me that list of countries, which is perfect. So what essentially I want to happen is that if I select Thailand in here, when I click down in tour, I want another drop down list that's going to show me all of the tours available for Thailand. So I'm going to click in cell B15. I'm going to jump up to data validation. I'm going to select list again, and this time my source, I'm going to use the indirect function. So I'm going to say equals indirect, and I'm going to reference whatever is in cell B14. So remember, whatever's in cell B14 will reference the range up here. So that's why it's really important to name your ranges to make your life a lot easier when doing things like this. I'm going to click on OK. And now you'll see I have Thailand selected. So what I would hope to see in this drop down list are all of these tours specifically for Thailand, which I do. And if I was to change this to Bali, this drop down list is going to change and show me the tours for Bali. So we've created two levels of dynamic drop down lists. So a really, really nice little way to use indirect along with data validation in order to achieve that. So those are just a few examples of how you can use the indirect function with other things in Excel in order to supercharge how you work with your spreadsheets. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.